welcome you all back to this program, Think Tech Hawaii, and its show Human Humane Architecture, happening to be the 345th episode. And you are now past our 20,000, it's 150 something viewers, which we appreciate. So uh, we're back on the program. This is the November 4th, 2024 show with you, Jay Fidel. Thanks for being here for us and with me. <laughs> Appreciate it. And of in course. appreciation of that, you in your program had said, okay, um, enough. We're going to take a break from being overly saturated with... Um, news that is not helpful and hearing that from you that means something because you are the man of that you know news is always helpful but we got to the point where too much could be too much so uh in appreciation of that let's talk about architecture which this program is about but also let's scratch maybe one other topic that's hovering over us um in these uh challenging days that uh working title is manliness so how do we behave above and beyond our um, what's given to us as attributes physically that are around our body? But what does that mean as far as our behavior as, as human beings, human humane architecture uh, being the, the, the topic of this show here? So um, you said a couple of shows ago, Jay, you said, I hope you quote me on it. And I do, because you said architecture is where we live. And I allowed myself to add to his and love. So architecture is where we love, brackets fall in love, in and with. So that gets uh, me to the next slide, because that sounds very cryptical here, because you share it with us that you fell in love with your dear sweetheart wife in a bank, go figure. And if you guys want to know about it, you got to go some shows ago. And I, you know, when we are talking, dating us and aging us, the newest generation has really little clue what we're talking about. And I increase, I used to say, ask your parents by now, I have to say, ask your grandparents. So if they do, they will hear about what I showed them here, which is Blue Hawaii movie. And you see uh, here Elvis and Miley going up on Tantalus on a date and they're picnicking strategically with what circled the Ella Moana building that is the one that you uh, fell in love in uh, with your sweet now wife ever since Sharon. So this is the proof of architecture is where we live and love in. So, uh, but love, we got to keep alive, right? And buildings we love, we got to keep alive. This is our buddy DeSoto, who had just been frightening us because he sent that email here and says, on Sunday, I went to Ala Moana and happened to park where I could take this photo, the one at the bottom right. I al it almost looks this building is mostly empty thought I should go inside and see if it's actually still functioning. Yes, you should. Yes, we all should. And you should, Jay. And if that is the case, they call this demolition by um, reje uh, rejection or, or maintenance deferring. You should chain yourself to the building and saying, this is the building I fell in love in, so I'm in love with it. And it needs not just to be kept, but it actually needs to be brought back to its original, as you remember it, as a pioneering raw model of everything we're talking about these days, saving the world, the planet, bioclimatics, it had sun retractable louvers and kept itself cool. And that's why it was so cool. But recent developments, we, we did uh, 17 shows on what's happening around it. So if you wanna watch these, top right are the show quotes. We call this Midtown Flunk because what's going on is they're suffocated around with these Korean developer and no racism, doesn't matter where they come from, but what they do is what they matter. They do these stupid uh, blue microwave boxes all around and then they put their circular logo on their opening website over the building. That should have made us suspicious to begin with. So architecture uh, and love, 
You see here a gentleman, that was the last time I saw him, unfortunately, and that is Don Pierce, the one we want to talk about today as a good raw model that I want to share my thoughts about, about manliness. And this is the first Hawaiian bank on uh, Kapahulu, and this was uh, around uh, Valentine's Day. That's why they put up the hearts, although I want to believe they put them up for Don because he's a, such a lovely person. And the other lovely person we're going to talk about on behalf of him is this gentleman here, Keone uh, Oshiro, who was supposed to do the show, but he got held captive by capital concentration, as you call that, and was putting in a request to be on the show, but the supervisor, and I'm increasingly thinking about languages and meanings, as you can tell, Jay, because supervisor, so what's super about this visor here? Nothing, because she didn't give him the time to be on the show. So we got to talk on behalf of Keone here, but I rehearsed and I went through everything with him. So he's, he's been okaying that. He's currently actually working, that's getting our spirit back up in a place that, Jay, you remember, because uh, four years before he got washed on the shore here, uh, that one was was under construction and this is me taking screenshots of Blue Hawaii and you see just like your falling in love building was staged strategically up on Tantalus here when Elvis and Miley get out of the water with their surfboards it's strategically placed in the background and it looks rather kind of ghosty and the reason is actually because as we see here, it is a steel skeleton that then got basically clad. And this is the Waikiki Shore building right on Fort de Russi Park that was, as this here uh, teaches us, a built in these days, finished in 62, started in 59. And I recommend this. They actually did put up this, uh, this uh, board on the wall in the recently remodeled lobby and it tells the story of the place in a very, very proud way. So I want to commend these to uh, having done a good job. And also architecturally, Jay, you just came back from, well, not just, but a little while ago from Japan, where you, ever since you want to talk about interior design and well done in Japan, is this like in the, in the sense of what, what you remember from there? Uh, because that's what I associate when you tell me about it. And I saw this, I thought like, hmm, maybe Jay was hurt. And someone here in this place here actually listened and did. This lobby was uh, rather dark and, f and, and rather suffocating, speaking of, because it was all AC'd and no openings. And the, the front desk was actually where now the seating is. And so they reversed that. And, you know, they did a little design trick. I mean, they have, as you saw on the previous slide, they got this uh, zigzaggy roof going on, uh, leading to the, um, uh, leading to the, um, the entrance here. So they kind of echoed that theme in the, in the, you know, the ceiling cladding, which is, but otherwise it's actually pretty restrained. There isn't like too much. The main thing is performance here, bioclimatic performance, because these are Fleetwood doors. That's a window maker, an American. And these doors are mostly open. They offer as kind of being diplomatic, a kind of a split system, how you call it, when at times you want to have AC and you run it, you close it, but otherwise you turn it off, which here happens mostly, and they open the doors. So I think this is basically in the right direction. And as we always have to complain about the things mostly that don't go into the right direction, we're really kind of hungry and almost deprived of, of good news these days, right? So this is trying to cheer us up as if you can't tell, you know, if you haven't, you know, seen already. But the building we all met is my former home and where Keone worked as a front desk manager and uh, our manager, Don Pierce, who's guiding us through the show. This is Waikiki Grant. This is uh, donated by DeSoto from his archives here. And this is how we all age together, right? This is, it always shows how many shows ago. So this was the 330th show. Now we're in the 345th. So doing the math, that was the 15th show we ever did on this program some seven years ago. 
and it got 3.3 K views. Woohoo! This is one of the one of the runners up, right, of, of the most views. So there must be something about it. And we were recalling that the hotel originally uh, was very, very self-sustained because it actually had this little mini mart, so like a convenience store. So you can conveniently go down and actually grab something to eat or to drink, go back up. When I was there, uh, we get there next, what it became uh, then later is the, the headquarters, the informal of the uh, LGBTQ movement. And when at that time, that was probably appropriate for that, there was a Speedo underwear shop in there at that same space where, but that's long gone. And now there is actually a realtor's office in there. And in this transitioning, things actually gotten not, um, you know, not better. And this is very um, bittersweet memories of one of our inhabitants, the Waikiki Grant, we call the most inclusive of all our places we have, because you got a bunch of people from all over the place, from sexual orientation to race, to age, to income, you have like Vanda, who lives on a scarily short social security check, and she's from former Yugoslavia. And you have Tina and John, who are multi-millionaires, uh, real estate. And we, they all live on these 230 square feet spaces, talking tiny homes, tiny houses. And this here is our dear Charles Gonzalez, who that was around Halloween, which we just had. So we can say this is a delayed Halloween show. I did not recognize uh, Charles being the best drag queen I've ever seen. He actually had to talk to me and scare me, boot me. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. We lost charge, uh, Charles, as it says down here, some years ago. And uh, we can't blame anyone and we don't want to do, but that transitioning I was talking about, what the hotel goes, the condo hotel goes through, uh, getting more gentrified, uh, certainly we can say it didn't really help him. Here is again, when it gets ready for, which we also had these uh, days ago here, which we can call the love parade or the pride parade, obviously Hula is a prime, actor in all that. And this is all managed. It was all managed by the manly man, Don Pierce, who was the manager. And he basically built this, uh, this train, the Santa Claus train for his kids from scratch as he built like, there it is up close. And um, he was just the man that, that built everything in the building. And this is him as a grandfather. How lovely is that? And where are they? They are in this. He built this from scratch in the basement of the Waikiki Grand. And this is literally from scratch. This isn't like a car that he hot rodded, right? This is basically from scratch. There's our P mobile buying, mobile next to it that looks rather profane and ordinary compared to that one. And, you know, Everyone who talked to Don, you know, um, they loved it. And he loved talking to them. Speaking of that, UJ, you said um, you repeated your request that I can adopt you, um, depending on political circumstances. And we also adopt you. It's once shared that you are a proud uh, God father. And so here is... Uh, for that day, you had an additional godson, and that was my godson for the time of two years ago when you had the first getting us together after COVID. And so here is Don pulling by. He wasn't the manager at that time anymore at the hotel, but he came by when Sammy was there and they started, you know, just having this great conversation. And, you know, for a teeny, such a car, right? That one has been built as well down there. In the, in the garage, in the parking garage. And then Don said, okay, and this is an idea for how maybe we could live and dwell differently here. This is probably the most to learn for us in architecture because Don then said, hey, why don't you guys come over uh, and hang out with me? And we're like, okay, you're not in the hotel anymore. 
where are you? And he said, well, go to Waikiki Boat Harbor and you will see. So here's Don grabbing Sammy, walking over to uh, Don's dwelling. And uh, he's always very, I mean, he built these cars from scratch, but this is in front of the first Hawaiian bank where I last met him. Um, and then he said, Martin, you know, my hot rods, you know, getting up in age and I really had to change. And so he said, you know, now I'm driving a Tesla. I'm not sure, again, how things have gone so bad with uh, the who makes Teslas. The way we actually hardly ever talk politics, there was never actually any reason, but I can see him, the liberal person he always was, attitude wise, that he maybe by that time would. I'm always thinking, I don't know about you, uh, if you ever bought a Tesla with good intentions, Jay, I would have sold it by now because I, I don't want to be associated with it anymore. And I, I can only speculate, but here it tells you what an innovative guy he was because here is his house. Um, and you see part of his house that, again, Semi was very impressed because this is trying to go for zero, net zero, because he has photovoltaics on the roof, so to speak. And here comes the super cool part. You imagine you as a teenager, you're shown by this guy here how your, how your home works. So there's this humongous diesel engine. So what it is is that he had, I mentioned Tina and John, so John and Don built this from scratch. It's uh, you coming from the military, uh, Jay. This is a military barge or vessel that he totally from scratch converted into his home. But so to be, you also coming from the legal realm to be uh, halfway legal or eligible to be not be totally illegal. Uh, it has to be according to the rules in this harbor. It has to prove that it's still a boat and and go out to the sea once a year. And luckily for, for Don, it does not say how fast you go. So him, him having put all this extra weight on the boat, it was barely moving, even though this huge diesel engine, but it was moving enough so that it moved. It almost took him a day to float out there. And then one of the guys was making a check mark and said, okay, you know, and so you can go back. So he had to do this once a year. So here is again, the big diesel engine over the bed. I mean, this is priceless, right? For a teenager, you should have seen Sammy's eye. And there is a full blown kitchen. Um, there's everything you need to live. And he lived the Aloha. So this is on his Lanai that we all know is the best place to live in and on. There are some other examples. This is another guy we know. This is uh, at La Mariana out there. So there's another boat harbor and on Sand Island. You can see the tiki uh, totem there and the palm tree and the boats. And this is Tito. Tito is the jack of all trades of La Mariana. And uh, Tito is Argentinian. Hi, Tito. And Tito used to have a fellow pi mobile, which he now doesn't have any more. So he's another example of these smart people who basically tricked the bad housing situation and said, let's just stay afloat by floating on the water and dwelling. And so what's not to like about this Jay here? I mean, this is the coolest lanai you can possibly think of. And Don is now on request of Sammy explaining all the tricks, how he you know, bend uh, with a, he built himself a, a bending machine for bending the tubes into that slide curvature. So you have the water run down. So he did this all still in the Waikiki Grand down there and then brought it all out there. And you can tell, you know, they're talking and talking and talking and it gets night and they keep talking about it and don't stop. And it's not just, you know, Don talking all the time. You can see the young gentleman here gets really activated and they love it. So somewhere late at night, we basically said goodbye. And having done this show, since we're working on this architectural guidebook here, I think I'm going to make this a, a late entry to the, sh to, the, to the book as a prospective outlook for alternative ideas that we're so deprived of how can we live you know, better in paradise. 
uh, because it's really, you know, an, 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 an awesome idea. And thanks to you, Jay, this is the only guide of the 144 guides out there of the German publisher. And this is the only one that has QR coded extra 30 plus minutes viewing and listening material. So we will link this show to that reference and then the audience can listen to us because you see you soon going to respond to my monologue here. So dear Don, you're, um, you're remembered always and forever as that super cool manly guy who uh, didn't have to be macho, right? Didn't have to be tough. Uh, you were tough, you were a leader. And we call this stunned man because Don um, also had some acting going on on the side. And uh, so, um, in fact, on the um, this is from the very first. I now charge myself to go through all the original Magnum PI, 162 or 66 episodes. And the first one is actually in where he lived, in his hood, right? And you see they continued uh, what Hawaii 5 did before that they used architecture. You see 1315 Alamoana Boulevard at the bottom left. And you see you're falling in love in Alamoana building at the right. So these were the heroic pieces of architecture that one uh, was basically proud of. So um, his acting, he told me, and I wrote it down luckily before he couldn't tell me anymore in person. He continued this all through the years. And even in his 70s, he was still on and off having a gig. This was here in the reboot of Hawaii 5 -0. You got to watch that uh, episode 709. And so he's in that one there. And, and thinking about him, this, this song, you remember the song by Rod Stewart, uh, Jay, where he sings, um, you know, he said, never wait or hesitate. Get in kind before it's too late. You may never get another chance cause youth's a mask, but it don't last. Live it long and live it fast. Georgia was a friend of mine. I, somehow this song comes back to my mind when I think of, uh, of Don Pierce. So before we go back to some slides and your response, um, I think next time we get together, we should talk about womanliness as well. And this, this term actually exists. I didn't think it would, but I thought it would be discrimination if it wouldn't, right? But it exists. So if you if you look it up, it actually it says what are the societal attributes we associate with gender? So the expectations, right? So it's it's really interesting in this day before the election where America decides what does it want? Does it want manliness or does it just think it wants something that it thinks it's manliness or would it want womanliness? So this is all going to happen and. I think what I'm going to do, Jay, uh, because uh, in a couple of shows, we've been scratching the surface of me sharing the tete a tete with what um, we said last time. Um, Forbes magazine says she is currently the most powerful woman in the world, Ursula von der Leyen. So I think we should finally disclose more in detail what that situation was about. That makes me so confident about female leadership. Because I, you know, I experienced it very personal from someone who's, you know, now up there uh, representing the European Union and that I, we had architectural discourses with it. They were not uh, like uh, just small talk and, oh, we agree. It was actually the opposite. But because of that, it really um, encouraged me to believe uh, um, in female leadership on top, of course, the one and a half decades under Angela Merkel, which I had spent in exile, by the way, when she became Bundeskanzler, I slipped out and came to the United States. So I didn't know her from abroad, right? So not even from within. Okay, what of all that provoked you the most and what do you wanna respond to, Jay? Hmm. Well, thanks for the opportunity, Martin. I was looking at the text on your slide, the slide that shows now, and I said, wow, that, that's exactly what we said. Be sure to vote for candidates who care for our country. And then I noticed that you said TTH before. So you took that off one of our shows, didn't you? 
because we said that too. We said that first. Yeah, you. It's a quote. You you said at the beginning. I quote that you said quote me, and here I quote you because this is exactly what you wrote a couple of days ago. That you said, hey, uh, we're going to stop getting um, you know caught up in in fakeness and in either not enough information or wrong information. And I was very impressed uh, that you, I mean, I go further in being more explicit who I would suggest to everyone else to join my experience. And, but you did not even do that. You just say very fairly as you always are, you said candidates who care for your country so that you make them think, please think about who do you really think, you know, cares for your country. And you're not saying who you think that is. And I really respect you a lot for that, Jay. Well, you know, um, you're right. It was a, a sort of a double entendre. It, it's, um, yes, you should um, vote for candidates who care for the country. And who might that be? Who might that be? And even if you're opposed to her, you have to, you have to conclude that, you know, she cares for the country. And he doesn't. But let me move on. I have I have more thoughts I want to share with you. Please. Um, that first um, condo that you showed uh, in Waikiki uh, it really touched me, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, over the weekend I visited Kahalanui, which is a senior facility, and um, and, and the lobby that you showed there in Waikiki Shores looked a lot like. Um, the lobby that 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 picture there in in um Kahalanui and a lot of other senior facilities around town um and what i thought was the difference between a lot of these condos the lobbies and Waikiki Grand was that Waikiki Grand under Pierce somehow achieved community i know this because you mentioned it many times and people knew each other. They said hello to each other. They they shared a lot of things. And and so this was more than a hotel. It was more than a condo. It was more than a rental building. It was a community. And I say to myself, why not have more of that? The condos that we are building today are sterile. I'm sorry. Um, they're expensive. They um, they allow you to isolate yourself rather than you know communicate with your neighbors or the community at large. And I said to myself, well, you know, a creative architect could take one of those sterile buildings and make it into a community so easily. It's not a matter of amenities. No, it isn't. I mean, so, some of the best buildings have the most limited amenities. It's just a matter of setting up a system like Pierce did um, where people talk to each other, <clears throat> make, uh, make common denominator activities, what have you. And so my thought to you today, Martin, uh, and I hope you take it um, on down, is that is that we don't have enough senior facilities in the state, but we have t a load of condominiums, okay? And they could be converted to senior facilities so easily. Um, yeah, maybe you have to change the condo documents. Maybe you have to change the, the management people who would be more like Pierce. Um, you have to um, add some you know, special floors for people with special medical issues. Um, you would have to uh, support them with, um, you know, maybe um, cafeteria type, you know, eating arrangements. But you wouldn't have to do that much. You really wouldn't. And all of a sudden, you could have a whole industry, a sector of these condos that were isolated and sterile, and you could make them into senior facilities because you know what? We're all getting old. A lot of the young people are leaving town <clears throat> because they don't like condos too, too much. They're leaving home. They're going to the mainland. They're staying there and not returning. So what you have is a bell curve, you know, where more people are more advanced. Also, you have people who come to Hawaii for the weather, you know, and for, you know, I don't know, call it the personal security, quality of life, whatever. Um, but they don't, they don't have a place. They can find a condo, but they cannot find a senior facility that offers more than just a living space. 
And so I'm, I'm really serious about this. I think there's a huge opportunity for so many of these condos. You know, you say they you know, that this one, Waikiki Shores, got remodeled. Of course, they should all be remodeled. They should be remodeled in a way so that they can uh, adapt to this very special and growing market. It would change the face of Waikiki. It would change the face of Hawaii. It would change the market for people to come here. Uh, it would give us a whole new lease on life. It would create a large expansion, in my view, of the hospitality industry. Um, so think about that, Martin. I'd be very interested in your thoughts. Absolutely. And there's I, we can go through the 345th show and identify so many that touched on that one. The one that comes to my mind, it was also very early, is one of our emerging talents, students, who said, hey, um, I have granny have us over. And that was in the, um, in the one by the architect Frank Slavsky. It's on um, uh, Kalakaua Avenue before it meets Baritania. And it's a, it's a high rise building that is absolutely heaven on earth for senior people. And his grandma happens to be from, from China and she lives in there and uh, she has a, uh, a, an open hallway lanai that is wide enough to serve as a front yard that without getting in trouble with a fire marshal, she can have a chair out there. She has some plants there, you know, so it, it really is, a, is an urban front yard. Her whole unit is easy breezy, cross ventilated. The walls don't go up to the ceiling. So it has everything. And then we were at that time, there were some private um, developer driven ones under construction down the road. In fact, where Kalakaua then crosses Alawai. And these are prisons. And recently in downtown, they did this one on Baritania. They are profit driven, top down. They know there's desperate seniors and you know that's all they can get. And then they get stuck with that. Once you start the bottom up, as we keep talking about the cooperative versus the corporate, you get that going. And you know, I think the real beauty on top of what you said, yes, we all get older and older, but also, you know, we are foster fathers and parents. And, you know, we have the young generation, even if it might be professional as I'm, you know, in touch with them, put the two together, put the two back together, right? Because that was in most cultures, they were not connected. Capital concentration very selfishly separated them, right? And they, then we can actually milk them and get money out of them. So we buy, we built these horrible hermetic senior living assistant things where they are trapped, you know, in their rooms in AC. And like every other day there comes a tour bus and hauls them out to the Polynesian Culture Center. They can all drink a coffee together, haul them back and lock them back in their prison cell, right? Student housing and our UH is complicit with that isn't much better. It's the other end, the front end of it. So if you stop that and put them back together, and this is what's happening in, in Europe, we're gonna reconvene looking at Barcelona in our next show together with Pedro. It's happening there where you bring the, both ends back together. So young people, you know, have a hard time making a living. They can't find anything decent. Old people, you know, they might have a place, but they have not, no one around them. So you put the two together, and it's a, it's a synergistic, symbiotic relationship between the two. I, I speak also from experience, experience because my, uh, my sons and Joey is coming back, by the way, looks forward to see you when he was young. My ex-wives, their mother's grandma, her husband passed away. And so we had that little extra unit on the, on the grounds that I remodeled then quickly. And we, she lived with us and it was great. I mean, there were situations where my sons were shoving, you know, sand from the sandbox in her living room, which she didn't quite, you know, wasn't asking for. But that was the most that there was really like something that, you know, really as trouble. That was the most. Otherwise, it, as we know, you know, it, it kept her young and it provided them with, with, with wisdom from the wisest, right? So we, we all know this, right? This is not new, this is not rocket science, 
But capital concentration, as he so greatly taught me that term, and I'm overusing it uh, because it's spot on, basically killed it in its own self-interest. So we got to bring that back. Because to this degree, while, yes, uh, this is, this is uh, aesthetically well done, um, this, this building, this remodel, but um, ethically and social ethics, um, it is, of course, you know, it is a condo tell and, you know, it's, um, and Waikiki Grant at least was, and I'm seeing this, I mean, I'm, you know, the students, I always thank them for feeding me, so I'm, I'm complaining on a high level, but when I got evicted and my altruist landlord's son sold it then and he, a younger couple, bought it and flipped it into an Airbnb and Joey saw it online, it was like five or seven thousand dollars a month for an Airbnb. I mean, that, that's insane, right? And that's, that's also pushing the the homeowner association fees up the building so that Wanda is worried about, can I stay in there, you know, on my soul? So it's the greediness, as we know, the greediness kills it. So when we take out the greediness and we, we bring people in, I, I'm, you know, I, I moved a couple blocks over. I have the same altruist landlord again. Thank you. I, I'm not supposed to know them because I have property managers, but of course the managers, by the way, tell me then who the owners were. So I want to thank this one here as well, who belongs to the Savio group that you had on the show, you know, a couple of times and checking them out. So um, there are people out there who still, you know, don't need to like, you know, uh, get more and more and more and be greedy, greedy, greedy. There are some people who say, you know, I let's, Live and let live. As long as I cover my costs and I have a little bit, it's okay for me and I'm happy with uh, people being happy. That attitude we need back, right? That's the foundation of it. Or again, the corporate, the, 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 not the corporation, but the cooperation is people team up, they chip in, and they together function as the owners, right? That's the nature of a, of a, of a cooperation versus the corporation where few people own it, but the other one is where everyone together owns it. They're in it together, literally and figuratively speaking. Mm, I certainly agree. And, and I want to point out that uh, to me, to me, in my taste, the senior facility that's a, a 501c3 nonprofit is going to be the best because there's nobody out there hustling for a buck. Let me add yeah. one other thing, Martin. Um, and and uh, this just touches on something you said. When I was a kid, I worked at a summer camp and it had various branches. And uh, one of the branches was uh, really quite amazing. Uh, it was a combination of elderly people um, who were there and very young people who were there. And of course, summer camps are all about community. This was a summer camp that was, um, gee, all about community. And and so the the elderly people were encouraged to join the young people, and I mean young, I mean kids, um, in activities of one kind or another. And the kids loved it. They loved, you know, what the elderly people were willing to do for them, to spend the time and care for them and all that. <clears throat> and the elderly people loved the kids. So the whole thing was like total magic, total magic. But of course, you'd have to sit and think for a while about how you could do that, you know, in, in the hospitality industry, um, to have elderly people in the same building and the same project as young people. But if you could do that, if you could achieve what you were talking about, and what I saw when I was a kid in this, uh, you know, this camp I'm describing, it would be really, really magic. And I believe it's possible. Absolutely. And we uh, happy birthday to Richard Lowe, our dear friend who we had with us and he played for your annual event, um, you know, about a year ago on the piano. Right. And he was in his mid 90s. And of course, you know, he was aging and we have to continue. Uh, you know, he taught us so much. And these shows are called Aging in Agility. We did several and we have to we have pre-produced uh, the continuation of it. We just have to do it once Bundet is a little bit more over his passing. You know, we're going to go back to that. And Bundet just yesterday sent stuff um, commemorating him because it was his birthday. And again, I mean, this is the learning curve we had with him as far as, you know, the uh, the intergenerational 
and and what you know his music meant to other people i've seen when he was in in rehab up there at the uh um what was it called it's down your valley right in uano um that 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 rehab facility whenever he was coming down and played on the piano you know there was this one moment there was a uh, Asian family coming with their son and that son, that little son, he was like two, three years old, if even, was mesmerized and just stared at Rich playing and he was so energized, he's like, oh, great audience, thank you so much, you know, so they were like, we could have all left and left them there, um, you know, alone. It was, it, it's, these are amazing, you know, um, experiences that it's so mean, again, that, that the greediness of capitalism cuts this out and off because it knows, you know, this is going to, you know, hurt them. And we need to cut them out and come with alternative projects that we team up with this sort of fiscal kind of tricks, so to speak, the organizations that you're talking to that, that make it possible and basically bring it. I mean, unfortunately, we have gotten that reputation that versus mid-century when you and DeSoto were part of here of that sort of amazing heyday statehood innovation and ever since you know it's been going down and now we're at the point that we're saying you know we're behind things all the things that elsewhere they've gotten a long time ago like a public transportation rail right we finally get it and then we we get it wrong in the way we get it so here is is something to really catch up and you know and and get it fast from from these other places where they in europe again talking ursula von der leyen which she governs as the commission president it's really the you know we reconvene to it soon in two weeks you know with pedro from barcelona and uh, we're talking about social housing and and um, yeah, all of that. So we need to really get us a boost here. Absolutely, Jay. And uh, yeah, getting us a boost. Hopefully that was the right November 4th way of human, human architecturalizing, you know, and not getting caught up in negative things, but um, a positive outlook under positive leadership. These things will happen and we will never give up on believing in them and thanks jay for sharing that optimism with all of us thank you martin so uh if you haven't voted i mean not talking you personally of course we have but everyone else out there who listens to us get your vote in and as you say jay go for the one that you believe cares for your country and your culture and culture has to do with cultivation right how cultivated are we and basically it comes down to me quoting you saying architecture is where we live and live means you know we we can't be at the maslow pyramid the social is right there right it's it's right above the the eating and the shelter you know have a roof above the head but the social is right the next step right so we should definitely remind us of that which we have done now for now <laughs> okay jay thank you uh see us back in uh two weeks and look forward to DeSoto then in between. I'm gonna go into a studio with the kids and thanks for telling me that you guys were talking about food last week. So I will look for that show and making it the viewing assignment for that architectural design studio that I'm going into now. Thank you, Martin. Aloha. Thank you, bye-bye.